The federal government on Monday approved a 2.18 trillion naira supplementary budget for the 2023 fiscal year to cover additional spending in defense works, as well as welfare packages such as wage awards and conditional cash transfers agreed with organized labor. Unveiling the details to State House correspondents at the end of this week's Federal Executive Council meeting at the Aso Villa, the Minister of Budgets and Economic Planning, Abu Bakr Bagudu, said the budget is to fund urgent issues, including national defense and security. Bagudu said 605 billion naira for national defense and security is to sustain the gains made in security and to accelerate it, and these are funds that are needed by the security agencies before the year runs out. Now, the sum of 210 billion naira was provided for the payment of wage awards to meet demands triggered by negotiation with the Nigeria Labour Congress. The council also approved 200 billion naira for seed, agricultural input, supplies, and agricultural implements and infrastructure to support the expansion of production, while 100 billion naira was okayed for the federal capital territory for urgent and immediate capital expenditure infrastructure works. And Nigeria's debts to China increased from $3.93 billion as of June 30, 2022, to $4.73 billion as of June 30, 2023, showing an increase of $800 million in one year. It is an increase of 20.36% from the second quarter of 2022 to second quarter 2023, according to an analysis of the external debt stock data from the Debt Management Office. Although the federal government has been exactly hoping about the terms of the agreement of its China loans, the DMO has made some statements on them in the past. And President Bola Tinubu on Monday said Nigeria's past sector privatization has failed to meet its objectives as the national grid was serving only 15 percent of the country's electricity demand despite being privatized 10 years ago. Tinebe, who spoke during the Nigeria Electricity Supply Industry Market Participants and Stakeholder Roundtable that focused on privatization, also called for recapitalization of power distribution companies. He said the analysis showed that the Ziscos were currently undercapitalized to close to 2 trillion naira, adding the Nigeria's power tariff should be rebased. Tinebe was represented by the Special Advisor Energy and Infrastructure Office of the Vice President Sadiq Wanka. The president stated that the reasons for the sectors on the performance in the last decade were well known, including deep commercial governance and operational issues that had begot the sector. Now, Senate President Gosu Lapabio on Monday said the careful planning and execution, or with careful planning and execution, Nigeria can meet this year's crude oil production quota that the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries has given it. Akbabio, who was represented by Senate Upstream Committee Chairman Etang Williams, stated this at the Independent Petroleum Producer Group Oil Producer Trade Section Capacity Building for National Assembly in Abuja. He said last month Nigeria's crude oil output hit 1.35 million barrels per day and 14% higher than the figure for August, the highest figure since the year began. Akpabio said consistent and determined efforts by the federal government yielded this dividend, which has given hope that with careful planning and execution, that we hit the OPEC quota for Nigeria, which stands at 1.8 million barrel per day. Nigeria's over-reliance on, on oil exports, according to an expert, has rendered its growth trajectory susceptible to endless and um, exogenous shocks in global oil prices, leading to economic instability. Now, Chief Economist Development Bank of Nigeria, Professor Joseph Nana, said there was need for strategic initiatives to unlock the vast potential of the economy through economic diversification, human capital development, and infrastructural development. He lamented that the economy has grappled with volatility of global oil prices, leading to economic instability, giving its every reliance on oil export. Nana spoke on unearthing Nigeria's economic potential for growth and development, strategic imperatives at the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria's Fellowship Investor in Lagos. He noted that the productive base of the economic remains weak, 
narrow and externally oriented with primary production activities of agriculture and mining and querying, including crude oil and gas. And according to him, Nigeria's growth is relatively weak and it's suspectably to shocks in increasing due to the macroeconomic policy framework, flows and other economic factors. In our upper head, Chairman of Presidential Committee says Naira will regain true value before December. This and more after this commercial break. Now welcome back. The chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Tyro Oyedele, has assured Nigerians that the ongoing plan by the federal government to introduce new foreign exchange rules will reflect the true value of the Naira. He also said the plan, which would include a crackdown on illicit currency trading, would result in Naira closing its gap with the unofficial rate and reaching a fair price before the end of 2023. According to him, the government sees a fair price for the dollar at 650 naira to 750 naira. Oyedele, speaking in an interview with Bloomberg on Monday, added that the government would set transparent rules for the operations of the official markets, as declaring a backlog of dollar demand estimated at about $6.7 billion. And away from that, in its selected food prices watch report for September 2023, released in Abuja on Monday, the National Bureau of Statistics says price of beef, rice, beans, onion, yam, and other food items increased in September. The report said the average price of one kilogram of boneless beef increased by 28.08% from 2,199 naira, 37 kobo. Recorded in September 2022 to 2,816 naira 91 kaba in September 2023. It said that the average price of one kilogram of local rice increased by 60.59% on a year on year basis from 471 naira 42 kaba in September 2022 to 757 naira 6 kaba in September 2023. The report added that the average price of one kilogram of brown beans increased by 28.76% on a year on year basis from 556 naira to one kaba in September 2022 to 760 naira 97 kaba in September 2023. It also stated that the average price of one kilogram of yam tuba increased by 45.11% on a year on year basis from 409 naira. 23 kaba in September 2022 to 593 naira 83 kaba in September 2023. On state profile analysis, the report showed that Rivers recorded the highest average price of one kilogram of local rice at 931 naira 82 kaba, while the lowest was recorded in Benue at 539 naira 35 kaba. And a total of 21.1 billion naira was spent on the procurement of vehicles for various ministers, departments, and agencies within five months. This approval is contained in a document obtained from Bureau of Public Procurement, stated that 10 agencies got this disbursement between April and August 2023. They include the Independent National Electric Commission, Federal Road Safety Corps, National Population Commission, Nigerian Police Trust Fund, Independent Corruption Practices Commission, and Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Commission, among others. The Bureau said the 4.5 billion naira was awarded to various contractors for the procurement of an unspecified number of operational vehicles for the Nigerian Police Trust Fund, while 1.91 billion naira was given to Mesa Kara and Wada for the purchase of 43 vehicles for the Independent Corruption Practices Commission. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Commission got 1.1 billion naira while 8.55 billion naira was spent on motor vehicles and tow trucks for the Federal Road Safety Corps. 37 work vehicles for the Transmission Commission of Nigeria at a cost of 1.36 billion naira and MPC ICPC received 388.8 million and um, 835.2 million naira. The federal president, um, former president Mohammed Buhari in 2020, ordered the MDAs to buy only vehicles made of or assembled in Nigeria, saying the policy to patronize local automakers was to insulate them from the policy that sought to drop import duties.